This is not a resin print. These parts have been printed from filament using a special set of parameters that will make sure that no voids are within the parts, giving them this transparent look and in my opinion even more importantly, making them significantly stronger. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Create your own beautifully looking website and get 10% off your first purchase by going to squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. If you ever bought yourself a rod of clear 3D printing filament, you might have been quite disappointed that the parts that you printed didn't come out as transparent and rather just looked more like a transparent whitish color. So I recently stumbled over an article on printables.com where a user named Rygar1432 shared their settings with which they were able to print really nice looking almost clear parts. The prints didn't only look nice but I also asked myself what the strength of these parts was because they look as if the layers perfectly bonded together potentially eliminating the weak point of FDM 3D prints which is that they often tend to break within the layers. Layers. I don't want to spoil the results, but I wasn't disappointed. So before we dive in, let me quickly talk about something I'm sure many of you are already typing on your keyboards. Just use a resin printer if you need transparent parts. So yes, that's theoretically an option, but not everyone has a resin printer and wants to deal with the mess and the smell. Even if you use a resin printer, it's still kind of hard to get really transparent parts because they still usually turn out matte after the washing process due to the inherent voxel structure of your parts. Even if you get clear resin parts by clear coating or resin coating them, they usually start yellowing quite quickly. Then there's the selection of different materials for filament based printing which is just way bigger and the properties, especially long term, are way better known. And it's just an interesting challenge to achieve transparent parts with an FDM printer and also see what effect this has on the mechanical properties. So let's save the challenge of printing real transparent resin parts for another video. And if you have already started typing, why don't you rather tell me what applications you see for transparent FDM prints. I'm not the first to do this because there is already a really old blog article from Colorfab around as well as a nice video Tom did on that basis. There have also been a bunch of videos on how to print transparent parts using Polymaker's Polysmooth material and then vapor smoothing them. However, those were mainly for vase mode parts. We'll focus on real thick walled FDM parts today. All of this came to my attention again when a post by Rygar1432 on Printable circled around a couple of weeks ago with a set of recommended parameters that I tried out on a simple part and it worked out really well on the first print. My first prints were in PCTG, but when I switched over to the more common PETG, the parts still looked good but not as great anymore as on my first try. This is why I thought it might be interesting to dive a little bit deeper into the parameters and the influence they have, because Rygar's recipe will not work for all of you. Filaments from different manufacturers will behave differently and also your machine might react in another way. So take this as a guideline what you could change to achieve transparent parts yourself. Rygar recommends Overture PETG, to which I put a link down in the description. And I've also read in different sources that some materials work better for transparent parts than others. I'll say right away that I overall got even better results with freshly dried PCTG, but since PETG is way more common, all the investigations here will be done with PETG. In my case, I used a roll from Dust Filament, which I purchased a while back for another project. Modern slicers have hundreds of settings and a significant portion of them will influence the clarity of your prints. Yet some are more significant than others and Rygar pointed them out in their post. I picked the flow multiplier, extrusion temperature, part cooling and printing speed for my investigation, but there are even more that might be relevant for you. There's layer height, perimeters, extrusion width or outline overlap and probably a ton more. For each of my print jobs, I only varied one parameter at a time. I'm well aware that there are cross influences and I'm certain I didn't find the best parameter combination, but this test series still showed me which parameters was more and less important. I used Prusa Slicer for all of my tests and sliced the test part I designed for this investigation at 0.12mm layer height. Link in the description by the way. I set the extrusion width for all the features to 0.5mm and only used one parameter. 
And I think most importantly for the incredible results that Rhaegar got was setting the infill to a line rectilinear at zero degree angle and zero top and bottom surfaces. This means that the infill is not printed in a crisscross pattern, but with all the lines parallel. This tremendously helped me to get rid of the last remaining pores. I also limited speeds to only 15 mm a second and turned cooling off. The first one and probably also the most important parameter I played around with was the extrusion multiplier, which I varied between 91 and 105%. The parts got clearer, the higher I set the extrusion multiplier and I already got really great looking parts at a bit above 100% flow, where the material was able to flow into all of the remaining cracks and voids. The parts didn't get less clear at high extrusion amounts, but you'll get swollen up parts due to over extrusion and really rough top surfaces. Due to the lack of cooling, overhangs and holes didn't look particularly great. Off the bat, the parts might not look as nice as in some pictures. I use glue stick on my bed and that leaves a matte bottom layer. But if you polish them up or even only add a drop of water or oil, you can really get an idea of how the inside of the part looks and how clear you can get the parts. The sidewalls due to their roughness are still not perfectly transparent, but even lower layer heights might help you in this regard. Though what should be totally clear is that you need to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you find interest in what I'm doing here. Next I tested the extrusion temperature. The DAS filament PETG prints quite cold and I tried 215 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius in 5 Kelvin increments. I only got some weird printing problems at the lowest temperature, but all other looked fairly similar at first glance. However, a closer look revealed that I got some milkiness at higher temperatures due to micro bubbles that formed in the material, probably due to moisture. And this is something I noticed over my whole test campaign. When I started, the PETG was freshly out of the box and the PCTG just came out of the dryer. The first print results were the most consistent and the easiest to achieve. The longer the material set outside, the harder it was for me to get really nice results. So maybe remember this point and if you're serious about clear printing, then dry your material. Overall, 220 degrees Celsius looked the best for my material. And keep in mind that besides the bubbling we saw, materials will degenerate if they are too hot for too long, which I've also seen on some parts due to their brownish EU. Let's at this point also talk about why regular prints with transparent material are not as transparent as glass for example. So light refracts when it moves from one medium to another and it bends depending on the materials and the inclination angle. In our case the two materials are air and PETG. A regular print is not solid material, so the light passes through dozens of these interfaces where it refracts, diffracts and reflects which is completely irregular and therefore parts rather appear shining white than really translucent. Even if we print with 100% infill, there are still tons of voids in our parts where refraction happens. There are gaps between the extrusions but also the interface between the individual extrusions where the polymer is not properly melted together, which also make those parts appear milky. So if we want to print transparent parts, they need to really be 100% filled and the extrusions need to melt together properly. A parameter that could affect the bonding of layers might be part cooling and Rygar warned about that. I tried it myself and printed parts with 0, 20, 50 and 100% cooling and indeed the parts without any cooling were the clearest, though interestingly the parts where I turned cooling on only turned a bit milky, yet showed way better part quality at bridges and overhangs. So if the clarity of your parts is not your primary goal, but you want only really strong parts, then maybe turn a bit of cooling on, especially since I've seen a very interesting impact on static strength, as we'll see in a bit. Finally, I tested printing speed, because maybe something I didn't make that clear yet. Printing these transparent parts is horribly slow. The very thin layers and the 100% infill are part of that problem but the low recommended printing speeds make them even take longer. The small test samples took 50 minutes each to print. A 3D Banshee takes 5.5 hours and my mini me figurine would take over 16 hours to print, which is kind of ridiculous. 
In my tests, I tried speeds from 5 all the way to 60 millimeters a second, and the results were really interesting. 5 and 10 millimeters a second were not as clear as I thought due to micro bubbles that formed in the material because the filament remains too long in the melt zone. 15 millimeters a second looked the best, but also the higher speeds didn't look that much worse, so I think there's definitely some speed potential left. Before we take a look at the admittedly very interesting part strength, let's quickly talk about today's video sponsor Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for many years for my own website and it's the place where viewers can find additional content, get in touch with me and find the products that we sell. Having a professionally looking yet easy to create and maintain website is more important than ever. Squarespace is the all-in-one solution that will help you create the website you always wanted, regardless of if you are a business, an artist or a maker who wants to share your projects. If you've been thinking about creating your own website or if your existing one is just horribly outdated, then pause the video right here and go to squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen and simply give it a try. You can choose from a wide variety of award-winning templates and then just customize them to your needs. Create a blog to share your stories, add a shop to sell your creations and add a members only area to unlock new revenue streams. Even though this sounds scary complicated, it's super simple because Squarespace will take care of everything in the background. No backups, no updates, so you can focus on creating the web presence you always wanted that will also look good on any device. So stop procrastinating, try it out yourself and even get 10% off your first website and domain purchase by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen and using code CNC Kitchen when checking out. Now that we have seen that printing clear admittedly is not super fast, but not super hard to do if you know the impacting factors, let's look what really sparked my interest. How strong are these transparent prints, especially between the layers? And just to make things clear, maybe pun intended right here? Even though I did all of these tests with natural, clear material, these printing parameters can be easily transferred to dyed materials with probably the same effect on strength. To test how strong the transparent parameter really is, I printed tensile samples in horizontal and vertical orientation, as well as impact specimens to get an idea about the toughness. My transparent parts were printed at 230 degrees Celsius nozzle, 0.12 mm layers, 102% flow and no cooling fan. The reference parts I printed used standard Prusa slicer parameters at 100% infill. I printed sets of my simple samples, but since I wanted to get an idea of how everything behaved on bigger parts, I also printed standard ISO dog bones and bigger layer adhesion samples. The parts came out okay, but definitely with some printing problems due to the high extrusion amount and lack of cooling. Yet, you could clearly see the difference between the milky looking parts with stock parameters and the clear looking transparent parameter parts. Usually part cooling decreases layer adhesion, but since the lack of it, especially at the 100% infill, also caused slight printing problems, I also printed a set of samples at 30% cooling, which were still transparent but quality wise way nicer looking. I tested the samples one after another on my DIY universal test machine and measured each of the test sections to take the real dimensions into consideration. Let's start with the reference that I printed with regular parameters. The horizontal specimens failed at 52 megapascals on average, whereas the ones printed standing failed at only 34 megapascals. This is less, but a layer adhesion strength of 65% is still remarkable for FDM prints. So let's get to the parts that I printed with the transparent parameter. The horizontal specimens were already stronger, with 59 megapascals on average, probably because the optimized parameter was able to print a fully dense part, so there was more material to take the load. They also significantly yielded, whereas the parts with the standard parameter simply snapped. The layer adhesion samples impressed even without looking at the numbers because they significantly yielded before breaking, which is something you usually don't see with these samples. With 44 megapascals failure load on average, they were not only 30% stronger than the parts printed with the normal parameter, they also reached 75% layer adhesion, which is impressive. What's even more impressive is that the samples that I printed with the transparent parameter but 30% cooling even outperformed those samples probably due to the fewer printing issues and reached over 80% layer adhesion. 
And I need to be even more enthusiastic because the bigger samples performed even better. The ISO dog bones failed at 59 megapascals, just like the small samples. But the bigger and round layer adhesion samples reached 54 megapascals, which is 93% layer adhesion and is something I would not have expected and just blows me away. This shows the potential of this transparent parameter, because if you are able to set it up for your material and have parts that can be printed with it, the strength of these parts will be almost independent of the printing orientation, which is basically the holy grail of 3D printing. For completeness, let's also talk about impact performance, where you smash the hammer with a non-energy into parts and measure how much energy is absorbed during the impact. The more energy it takes to break the part, the tougher it is. On the horizontal samples, the transparent parameter outperformed a regular part quite a bit, but also showed significant scatter. On the ones printed standing, the transparent parts were also stronger, but didn't reach the performance of the ones printed on the bed. I think that this is simply one of the limitations of this process, because even though the layers bond very well together, the majority of the polymer chains will remain oriented in the printing plane, which decreases toughness and ductility perpendicular to it. That's a bit of a bummer, but something that can be dealt with. So there we have it. Prints with this transparent parameter are not only really nice to look at, but they are significantly stronger than parts printed with a regular parameter. And we were able to reach almost perfect layer adhesion. If you want to tackle that yourself, use Maya or Brygos parameters as a start and you'll be able to get good results very soon. The questions that remain for me are if the process can be adapted for other materials and how easy it is to find the sweet spot for filaments that are not transparent because that was a perfect indicator for our tests. I also want to see how we can speed up that process because for the moment you can only seriously apply that to very small parts. Unfortunately, I think that the low speed is one of the key factors why this method works so well and why the layer bonding is so good. I tested thin layers as well as over extrusion in the past and never really got these great results. Though this means that there is still a ton of research necessary to dial this in for other materials and find that sweet spot parameter that's very strong but still fast. If you want to use this for your designs make sure that they are suitable because the results on very complex geometries at the moment is not really great. Regardless, I think this is again another small yet significant way forward for stronger parts and also if gas and fluid tightness is something that you're after. And if it's not strength, then just think about complex light pipes or even optics. But what are your thoughts? Please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also, check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye. <clears throat> so if we want to print transparent, print transparent parts.